What's going on everybody? Good morning, good evening, or wherever you are, and whatever time it is, and welcome back to yet another video with your man, Emergeaholic, and ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode 5 of my Lusitani head-to-head -head campaign, where we're going up against my man Toxborg, playing as Enervia. Today, we are finally kicking out the Carthaginian colonizers of Iberia, or at least... We will be trying to. In our last episode, we solidified our total domination over the Iberian Peninsula. Uh, we have a couple Iberian neighbors to the east, but they are friendly at the moment. So, for all intents and purposes, we are the masters of Hispania. But now, it is time for us to make our plans against Carthage. Going north isn't really uh, viable right now, because Carthage could stab us in the back. So, I've decided to go south. And this is roughly how we will do it. You can see that they have the city of Gadir to the west and Mastia to the east. Those towns need to be taken very, very quickly in our assault against the Carthaginians. We'll be launching an, a, we'll be launching an assault directly from our territories into theirs. There's going to be nothing special there. There isn't a lot we can do that will be special. But after that, though, we will uh, finally march down into North Africa take the city of Tingus and use that as a holding base to stop any further Carthaginian aggression against us. Right now they do have a small army at the city of Mastia and they have transports that keep going east and west. They keep going back and forth basically so we'll have to monitor their troop movements and see exactly what they're up to. Their garrisons are also quite large and fairly decent in troop quality. They're not as good as say possibly the Romans or uh, maybe the Greeks but they are definitely better than our own, so we need to avoid having any city or town defenses, uh, at least without reinforcements, and try and focus on overwhelming their garrisons with our numbers and our skilled elite shock infantry. Meanwhile, our army is still recovering up in the north after the war with the Aravachi. Uh, we're basically rebuilding that army from the entire ground up. We're still using a lot of those Illigurtan soldiers who are, are basically... Uh, auxiliary Iberian units, so we'll have a main front line of swordsmen along with our elite Balearic Slingers as well, of course, so that will be super helpful to take you on the Carthaginians because we need to stop their cavalry and their elephants from getting too close to our swordsmen. If they do, then that will spell disaster for our armies. And you have to remember, ladies and gentlemen, the armies of the enemy will be controlled by a player, that player being Toxborg, so that makes it all the more intense. Speaking of Toxborg, in the north, we see him making massive progress in Gaul. He is now uh, assaulting one of the final settlements that is not out of that is out of his current uh, influence. Um, he is setting up relations with others in southern Gaul, but right now we can see he owns all of northern Belgium. He has territory in western Germany over here at the city of Teleferdum and such. Uh, and so, if he takes that Gallic city on the coast. That's going to be extremely concerning for us because that could be used as a launch pad to send navies down into Iberia. So we're going to have to monitor that and start sending spies north to figure out his total strength. Because if he does take more cities in Gaul, he'll sweep like a wave down here into our territory through the mountain passes that we have. So hopefully we can push out and maybe take a city or two to try and slow down his advance in that region. But the... Uh, Factions of this region are allied, so the Averni have uh, the people of Bredegala as their client state. That's going to be very hard to deal with, but we do have some nice choke points like this river right here. If we can use that to stop and bottleneck the Nervii armies coming south, that will be super helpful. In the meantime, though, we are trying to reorganize and rebuild all of the recent Iberian settlements we've taken over. I won't go through every single settlement, but I will give you guys fairly general overview of what's happening. Basically, I'm focusing on a agricultural economy for the Lusitani. We don't have any uh, any industrial building chains whatsoever, so we're entirely dependent on using agriculture. And agriculture can be powerful. Um, I'm trying here, uh, but overall, our economy is still not doing well. Hopefully, uh, me investing a lot of money into these new towns we've recently conquered will mean that our agricultural uh, economy will have a small boom or even a larger boom possibly we'll have to see but we do have other things as well such as marble from this town up here in northwestern iberia taking these smaller resources while they're not the most valuable out there they do give us a boost in money and it will finally uh, perhaps persuade 
more AI factions to want to actually trade with us. And down here, just at the city of Abora, we actually have iron as well. So that's going to be super useful. And uh, I'm here trying to debate what kind of building chain I want to go for uh, with the iron. Eventually, I decided on, on an industrial building chain. However, we then have a bit of a situation on our hands. The Massalians are being attacked by the Volke. Uh, the Volke allies are not getting involved in this war, but if we do start fighting them, then they will get drawn into a war against us eventually. So, I had to make a really big decision here. I wasn't ready for another war, and so we're actually going to have to betray the Massalians and break our alliance with them. That may come back to haunt us later on in the campaign. We'll have to wait and see, but it was a really tough decision I had to make, but we only have one army right now and it's not even built. It's down here at Kartuba, as you can see, and it's in the process of being rebuilt. So uh, hopefully this army will either go east to Master or west to Gadir. We'll have to wait and see on how many more armies I can build. But unfortunately, the Volke up here at Berdegala are absolutely going to hate us so that is really concerning and we might see a bunch of declarations of war coming from the north we got no idea what to expect but generally speaking we haven't had much success with our diplomatic relations they even already have an army coming into iberia actually they're not at war with us um, i believe they might be attacking the sesatani but the main concern is that they're actually coming towards taraco if they do take it, then the Celts will have a very strong uh, strong point to launch further attacks. What say you? In the meantime, we are trying to get some relations with Masala, and in fact, they were the ones that actually offered a non-aggression pact after we broke our alliance, so that's kind of encouraging that maybe they won't stab us in the back, but we'll have to wait and see on exactly what they want to use this non-aggression pact for. Are they just trying to buy time to betray us later on? Or are they actually willing for us to kind of make up and reunite once again? We'll have to wait and see on that. A few turns later, we are now getting well into autumn and our army is almost ready. However, we are going to need more armies. And Mastia has a couple of small Carthaginian armies, as does Gadir to the west. So the months keep passing by. We actually begin recruiting a new army just west of Kartuba. That will be uh, used to try and launch an attack on the city of Gadir. We want to do a beautiful one-two punch on the Carthaginians, remember. We want to hit both of their towns that are in Iberia at the exact same time. That way, their reinforcements can't come to either town before it falls. They'll fall in one turn, hopefully. But here you can see Rome is actually sieging the city of Carthage itself. Rome is becoming a massive juggernaut. They hold all of Sicily over here, as you can see. They even have two massive legions right there. And they also hold all of Greece up here to the northeast. You can see they have a very strong uh, stranglehold over the region. And then, of course, they control all of Iberia, although they do not control all of Cisalpine Gaul up in the north there. So they do need to expand a little bit to the north, but that's kind of concerning that they're focusing so much on coming south and west because that means if we launch an attack into, uh, into Africa, then we might bump into them. Our Iberian cousins are are at war with the Carthaginians, so now the time has come for us to join them in the liberation of Iberia from the Carthaginian colonizers. So now we strike a deal with the Editani, we get an ally finally in this campaign, at, at least an ally that we can stick by because the Massalians is a little tricky. But anyway, now finally we are launching our assault against the Carthaginians, and it begins with our king actually coming in and getting involved. He's leading. Uh, nothing right now. He just has his own personal bodyguard, but command. that's because we're trying to um, get him involved and level him up a little bit so he can defend cities and get some uh, bonuses and whatnot. But we also have our major army right here attacking the Carthaginian one. The Carthaginian one has absolutely no chance against us, so we'll just order resolve them away and be done with it. And now the city of Mastia is wide open. Meanwhile, to the west, the city of Gadir still has a decent garrison inside of the town. Plus, we also have a Carthaginian army in a fortified stance just outside of it. Uh, we could beat them in a battle, but you have to remember, it's going to be controlled by a player. So, I'm not going to rush that assault, actually. And what I'm going to do instead is have my army wait there and possibly get some support from our eastern army that's attacking Marcia. 
Speaking of which, they begin the assault on Mastia with very few issues, and in fact, we will actually order resolve this battle as well. I almost didn't want to, but a massive army like that, controlled by a player, I have to weigh up my pros and cons, and to be honest, we would probably lose that battle if it was controlled by such a skilled player as my man Toxborg, so we have to consider these things. So we're going to take a fair few casualties, but... We take the major city of Mastia, which is a massive success for us, and it will help us stop any further incursions into our territory. Meanwhile though, since our army at Mastia got so depleted, we actually instead launched launched an assault on Gadir with only our one single army. There is a small army inside of the city, so that is going to be a problem for us, and it's such a problem that I won't order resolve the battle right now. Instead, we'll just hold out and possibly wait for the enemy to come and attack us if they do. Uh, but either way, we will give it a couple turns or so. But then winter comes around and we recruit some new units to the army, and now we're feeling a little bit more confident. The Carthaginian army that was inside has finally run away. And so because of that, the odds are very much more in our favor, and we will order Resolve Gadir away. And with that, we actually kick out Carthage already. It was a very quick war against them. However, the war is definitely not over. We have a lot of buildings to convert there, but we'll get more into that shortly. In the meantime, though, it's time for us to begin marching south. The city of Tingus has a sizable garrison, but it shouldn't be too much for us to auto-resolve. We, we may end up doing that, especially if we get some support from the Editani. They have an army to the northeast there, or even the Gaetulians to the south have an army. And in fact, the Gaetulians actually do come to our aid, and they move an army just close enough to the city of Tingus so that we can assault it together. So now we will get a very, very easy auto-resolve against the Carthaginians, and we'll finally get a stronghold in North Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, we are absolutely stomping Carthage right now. This is going pretty much perfectly, although they still do control the Balearic Islands, so that is going to be a concern for us. After the Catuli helped us, though, it is time for us to establish some diplomatic relations with them, so we have an ally Greetings. in North Africa. So hopefully we'll be able to upgrade to this to an alliance later on, but for now, our diplomats just negotiated trade, and uh, non-aggression between our two peoples. So hopefully it will help out and turn into an alliance later on because we'll take all the alliances we can get. I know that city is valuable, by the way. It is almost worth assaulting, but uh, we're busy fighting Carthage right now and I don't want to waste manpower taking on the Gaetulians who would do some decent damage to our lightly armored units. Meanwhile at Siga, there is a Carthaginian army marching from the east. It's not large, but combining that with the garrison at Siga, makes taking Siga very, very costly. So we're going to have to move up our army to the river next to it and hold our position. Uh, in the meantime, though, Mastia is still being converted to our Iberian culture. Uh, we're trying to tear down the Carthaginian buildings and rebuild, especially focusing on their agricultural power. However, now we have two armies in Mastia, one major one and one small one with just a few mercenary units because now it is time for us to launch an amphibious assault against the Balearic Islands. The Carthaginians are trying to use that as a base to launch further attacks against us. Uh, they're recruiting more men there, so we can't allow that. Once we do take it, as you can see by these red arrows, we have a lot of options after that. We could march all the way to Carthage if we want. We could go down to the Mesesali Heartlands. Who knows, the possibilities are not endless, but there are, but they are many, so... That will be exciting if we can take the city there. So you can see, Siga is definitely too strong for us to take right now. I tried to send the army for forward because the Gaituli had an army right there. However, uh, for whatever reason, they weren't reinforcing, even though they were literally right next to us in a fortified stance. So I'm not sure if it's a fortified stance that stops them. Perhaps it is. But anyway, the main issue is that we cannot... Get them to back us up in that battle, so we'll have to wait to take Siga. Um, but in the meantime, though, our forces from Mastia are finally marching on the city of Ibosum. Uh, the Carthaginians have quite a few units here. They have a decent little garrison. They have an army inside and a general. 
staying outside of the city who will come in and reinforce. So, even though the order resolve is in our favor, we are going to launch an amphibious assault. And so here we are on the battlefield, ladies and gentlemen. We have basically three wings of our fleet that I'll go over here shortly. Um, but this is almost entirely amphibious. The majority of our units will be coming in from the water, although thankfully our cavalry actually spawns on land. So that's a nice little touch uh, that's added into the game. I'm not sure if that's CA, if, uh, CA added that or if that's a DEI thing. I'm assuming it's a CA thing. But either way, I'm very grateful because it's a very cool thing and you'll see it come in helpful soon. Meanwhile, though, our seven uh, battle group of ships over here will simply just be landing on the beaches and beginning an assault directly into the town from the south. They'll follow the coastal road here, and then they'll also go down the main streets of the town. Further north, though, we have a large contingent of slingers. Our Balearic slingers will be moving forward to the town, but they will not be landing. They'll be waiting just off the coastline, and they will be within range to hopefully target some of the Carthaginian units from the side, especially the skirmishers in this blue circle here. We're gonna have to look out for them, so they'll do a lot of damage against us. And meanwhile, here is our third battle group of ships. They are basically reinforcements coming in. It's a general and a bunch of mercenary swordsmen, nothing too special, but the numbers will help us out. So we'll be sending in uh, them to launch a main assault along the main northern beach here. They'll be doing that as we're attacking the town from all other sides. So. Hopefully we can coordinate this appropriately. Speaking of coordination though, we also have cavalry waiting outside of town, hidden in the trees and in the fields. Uh, although they will be marching out to deal with the Carthaginian general who's trying to come in and reinforce the town with his personal bodyguards, so that will be nice. But we have a lot of cavalry here, so we definitely have the advantage when it comes to armies. And the battle will begin and blood will be first spilt over here. With the Carthaginian general getting singled out and absolutely smashed. We get a beautiful Iberian triangle against him with three units of cavalry charging in from all different directions. Uh, he will survive for quite a while. Carthaginian cavalry, especially their bodyguards, is definitely not to be underestimated. But when they're surrounded by this many units of cavalry and all of our cav is good, it doesn't matter. They're going to get wiped out. While that's happening, our main forces are now beginning to land. Our Iberian swordsmen are following closely behind our bear warriors who were the first to land right here. The best and brightest that the Iberian military roster has to offer is right here under their bear hoods and they will be marching along the coastal road shortly. Meanwhile, our Balearic slingers are doing exactly what we wanted them to. They are targeting the javelin men and skirmishers of the Carthaginian garrison and so doing this will make sure that our, our Iberian swordsmen don't get pummeled in the side or even in the front for that matter by these javelin men because they do some serious damage against our units. But after that was taken out it's time for us to launch our amphibious assault. So beginning here on the uh, northwest side of town we're launching our main assault right here we're launching swordsmen from the ocean, but we'll also have men coming up from the coastal roads. So this is going to be the major point of contention here for this battle. If we can get through these Carthaginian troops, then we'll be able to send men down all of the different types of streets. Here comes our bear warriors now. They're actually getting charged by the uh, Carthaginian hoplites. Very brave of them to charge against such terrifying warriors. And they're under fire from our Balearic slingers, so that's very helpful for us. And our troops will do absolutely fine there. They'll hardly take any casualties, actually. Meanwhile, along the north side of town, we have our cavalry charging into their swordsmen. They have a sword formation here, so I'm more than happy to let my cavalry charge head on straight into them and deal some serious casualties to them. Uh, we will be taking some fire from the skirmishers here, though there's nothing we can do about that except try to pull through in the center, try and stop them. But the main thing is that we're supporting a amphibious assault from our swordsmen here who are coming in off their ships now our mercenaries will charge up the beach as they're paid to do so while all of that's happening though we're assaulting all around town we have all of the different streets and alleyways of the town being assaulted the Carthaginians do have units in every single street but a lot of them are just low tier spearmen units so because we're sending in our bear warriors first they'll cut them down very quickly and decisively although it might take a little bit of time since a lot of these street units receive reinforcements. 
In the meantime though, on the northeast side of town, we will be sending in more cavalry and more swordsmen around to punch through this center here towards the town square. And if we can get through there especially, that will help out massively. The battle continues along the western shoreline. Uh, we actually begin outflanking some of the Carthaginian units and as soon as they get outflanked like that, they are absolutely routing off the battlefield. They can't handle it. They've already lost about half of their units. Uh, they've definitely just got to get cut down and route as soon as they get outflanked here. You can see a lot of them are already wavering. We're charging into the skirmishes to stop them from firing, so they'll get cut down very quickly as well. The javelinmen are not very good in melee whatsoever, even though some of ours are, actually. On the beach, we continue our cycle charging. Uh, we're making slow progress here on the northern side. Um, mainly because we're getting the Carthaginians are getting reinforcements from their general and some spearmen that were sent over. Although, thankfully, we've managed to send some cavalry into the center of their formation. You can see them cutting down skirmishes right here. So, as long as we can continue uh, doing that, then we will win this flank eventually. But we do have to keep cycle charging in and out and not stay locked in a melee combat with our cavalry. Meanwhile, the units along these streets of the Carthaginian town are finally really getting hammered down. Um, many of them are routing, the ones who aren't routing are almost routing or are very low on men. They're getting cut down very quickly right here. And we actually also have some cavalry units that have managed to outflank them from the northern side. So that's super helpful and it means that this battle is almost over already. The Carthaginians just cannot handle our coordination right now. Meanwhile, our units that landed on the western side are now finally completely punching through and are coming in to help our units that are assaulting the northern beach. The general is here. He's surrounded. He's about to be cut down. The majority of his garrison has already routed. And with just a few more seconds, he is killed on the battlefield. Fought honorably, so that's, you know, props to him. But it doesn't matter. The Balearic Islands are now ours. Here are the statistics if you want to see them. Uh, basically, all of our units did fantastic. <laughs> uh, one of our cavalry units did get hammered though by skirmishes, so I really need to be uh, careful of skirmishes because uh, my man Toxborg knows how to use them very well. He targets my cavalry very nicely, so GG's to him. But ladies and gentlemen, that's where we're going to leave this video today. We are in the middle of assaulting Carthage. Will we continue deep into North Africa or is it time to turn our direction back north and begin preparing for the Nervii onslaught that seems to be basically unstoppable at this point? We'll have to wait and see ladies and gentlemen, but thank you all so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed and I shall see you in the next one.